Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another tutorial with Mr. P. In today's video we're going to be setting up the environment for our game. We'll have a look at setting up the sprites for our player and then we'll create the layer that we're going to use for coding with Bolt. So to get started let's set up our base ground sprites. So to do that we're going to right click in our hierarchy we go down to 2D object and we're going to create a sprite. Alright, I'm going to leave my sprite at 0, 0, 0 and at scale of 1, 1, 1 for now. If you go down to your sprite renderer, this is what's visible. So if you click on the circle beside the none, I'm going to use the background sprite. Right, so you just double click on that. Now at the moment you can't see your sprite because it's hiding behind our camera. So if we double click on new sprite, it will zoom into it. So I'm going to want this to be my ground sprite, so I need to change the color of the top of it. I'm going to make it a darkish green. Then I'm going to change the scale to 2 on the X. So it looks something like this. Alright, now with that, I'm going to create a second sprite. So 2D object, sprite again. I'm going to use the same background. I'm going to set it to the same width, so 2 on the X. Alright, but I want this one to be longer, so I'm going to set it to 3 on the Y. Now, as you can see, we can't see our first sprite anymore. So to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my first sprite, and I'm going to change its order in layer from 0 to 1, and that will bring it to the front. So this second sprite, I want to be the dirt underneath the ground, so I'm going to change it to a brownish color like that. And then I want to move it down. So on my position for my Y axis, I change that to negative 0 0.15. Alright, so it looks something like that. So this is going to be the base of my ground. Now at the moment you can see it's two sprites. Now I don't want to have to keep creating two sprites every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in my hierarchy. I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to name it ground. And then I'm going to drag my new sprite and my new sprite one on top of ground. All right, and I'll set create ground as the parent folder. So I can hide those away. So what I want to do now is I want to add a collider to this sprite. So I'm going to go to new sprite one, new sprite again. I'm going to go down to add component and I'm going to type in box and we're going to add a box collider on the 2D. All right, you can see now that there is a green rectangle around it. Now at the moment it's a little larger than our green platform here so we're going to resize it. To do that you go to the box collider 2D, you go down to its size and if you click on the X and then drag it to the left, you can see it changes the size. So I'm going to line that up with the outside of my pixels and do the same thing on the Y. So just drag it. Alright, so it looks more like that. I'm going to change my X slightly so it goes to the outside. So I might make that 0 0.14. And I'm pretty happy with that there. So once you've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to drag our ground into our prefabs folder. All right, what that does is it turns the ground into a prefab so that we can reuse it multiple times over and over. And if we want to make any adjustments to it, we can just adjust this one here and it will automatically apply to anything we have in the game. So let's zoom out a little bit. I use the mouse wheel to do that. And we're going to create a bit of a ground. So I'm going to move the position of my ground I can do that by going up to the arrows of the move here and dragging it across a bit. So let's like zoom out so we can see our full scene. And drag it across and I'm going to drag it down. And so it's about there. Right, I'm going to select my ground scene and I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it and then drag that out. All right. Once you've got two, I'm going to select both of them, Control D to duplicate again, and then 
just keep lining them up. Alright, so once you've got a nice length like that, I'm going to select it all, duplicate it, and put a bit of a gap in for something for us to jump. Alright, I'm going to go back and select, say, five of them, duplicate that, and just drag it up to create a higher platform, and then duplicate that again, and drag it across. And I might even drag it up to the side. and create something like that. So that's our basic environment. Now you can see in our hierarchy we have a whole lot of ground game objects. Now I'm going to do a similar thing to what we did when we created ground. I'm going to right click in our hierarchy. Actually I'm going to click the plus sign up here beside hierarchy and I'm going to create an empty. All right, and I'm going to call this my world. So I'm going to select all of the ground game objects and drag it into world. That way I can minimize world and hide all of those grounds. They're still there, I can still interact with them, uh, they're just not visible. So now we've got an environment, let's create a player to go with it. I'm going to do this the same way, I'm going to right click, I'm going to create an empty first. I'm going to name this my player and I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, and 0 again. Then I'm going to right click on my player, go to 2D object and create a sprite. I'm going to adjust my sprite to the background. Oh, let's create a UI sprite this time. Right, double click on the sprite to zoom into it. Now I want it to be a little bit bigger so I'm going to make it 3 on the X, but 5 on the Y. Right, just to make it stand out, I'm going to make it an orange color. And to be able to make sure that I can see which way our sprite is facing, I'm going to right click on the player and create a second sprite. I'm going to make this one the knob. I'm going to make sure I set the order in layout to 1, so it's always on top. And I'm going to put this up towards the front and scale it down to 0 0.5. Alright. And use it as an eye so I can tell which way my sprite is facing when I want to do my movement script later on. Now of course, in, to stop our player from falling through the ground, it also needs a collider. So we'll go add component again and we're going to add a box collider 2D once again. All right, you can see it's got hard edges on the box collider here where it doesn't quite on our sprite. So if we remove our box collider 2D, so you click on the three dots, remove component, go back to add component. This time we're going to add a capsule collider 2D. And you can see it fits a little bit better, which makes the same adjustments to the X and the Y. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that there. So 0.15 on the X and the Y axis. So if we zoom back out by clicking and double clicking on our main camera, all right, we can now move our player over to where we'd like him to start. So I'm going to put him over here. I don't like that. So now we've got our base environment set up, we're basically ready to start scripting so that we can do the code for our character movement. To do that, we're going to need a new layout that we can use with Bolt. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to this. So the first thing we need to do is go up to Window, and we're going to add the graph. All right, so I just click my graph, and I like to put it where my console is, and then drag it all the way up as high as you can. Along with our graph, if you go back to window, we're going to need the graph inspector. All right. I like to put this over to the side. And then once again, we need the variables as well from window. 
and I put that down the bottom there. Alright, to do a little bit of testing while we have our graph visible, I like to grab the game and drag it over to the left and split the screen between our scene and our game. With this layout, I go up to my layout and I save the layout and I name this Bolt. So you should have a Bolt layout and a Design layout now. And it's very easy to flick between the two. You can select Bolt when you want to do your scripting or when you want to make some adjustments to your game you flick back to the Design layout. Alright, that's all for today's video ladies and gents. In the next video we will do the character movement for our game.